Good morning. This is Miss Stacy. Today we're talking about the element of art, shape. Last week we talked about lines. A shape is simply a line that goes all the way around and connects itself. And you have two different types of shapes. You have geometric shapes, which are mathematical, like circles and squares and triangles and trapezoids and octagons and all that good stuff. These are geometric shapes. And then the second type of shape is organic shapes. And these are shapes that can be found in nature, like in clouds or leaves or in you. You are organic. You are an organic shape. So today we're going to create an artwork that uses both geometric and organic shapes. We're going to make a city out of geometric shapes and then decorate the buildings with some um, organic patterns and whatnot. And you can find examples of both of these type shapes underneath the assignment. I'm going to put a chart for you of both, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to use the color pencils that I bought you all. You'll be receiving when you get back from Thanksgiving. And I might need a ruler and a pencil. That's about it. And if you don't have color pencils right now, you could use crayons. You could just draw it. Um, you can make a collage. You just use whatever you have at home till Miss Stacy gets you your supplies, okay? All right. Okay, we're gonna start out by drawing a building of some kind. And we're gonna use geometric shapes for that. You're gonna notice that I repeat the patterns um, throughout the drawing to add interest and to balance it out. So we're gonna start with geometric shapes for the building. Okay, so I've started adding color. I started with my background, with my sky. Um, you'll notice here I'm going on the edges and adding a, a darker shade or shadow to make it look more 3D. Um, it, if you're shading a color like orange, that we know orange is made from red and yellow, you would use the darker of those two colors to uh, press down on the edges and make it a, a darker color. So you would use a little red with over the orange and you would just overlap the colors. You'll notice when I shade the purple, I'll add blue to the edges to make it darker. Um, you could use the same color and press down harder, but if you want it to be even darker, you would just overlap it. And the best thing to do to make it look 3D is to shade along the edges. You'll notice um, a lot of shading going on here. And you'll notice that I repeat colors just like I repeated shapes. I'll repeat it all the way around. And that is, again, for balance and to control the viewer's eye. Notice the shading.
Okay, another thing you could do to make things look more 3D in addition to shading is highlighting. And one way you could do that is by making things lighter. Um, they're darker as they get farther away, so I'm making the ground in the background darker by shading. And in the front, I use some yellow over the green to highlight it because green is made from blue and yellow. So I used yellow to make it lighter and I used a, a darker green and some blues in the background so it would look darker as you got farther away. So here I'm shading um, the red and I'm overlapping it with purple where I want it to be darker. That's because purple has both blue and red in it and I think it looks a little better than using black and I just overlap those colors. Now we'll talk more about shading when we study the element of art value. This lesson is supposed to be on just shapes but it's hard to use one element of art and not discuss another. So. Just wanted to introduce it to you all.
Okay, so I'm finishing up by just going around and shading throughout in places that I missed. Um, again, using different colors overlapping to make it darker in some areas and lighter colors um, to highlight in the middle. Again, it's best if you shade around the edges and highlight in the middle. Highlight when you want things to get closer to you and shade when you want things to get farther away. Notice again, as you look at the finished product, how we move the colors around. Um, there is yellow in the top, in the moon, and then throughout the piece, there's yellow here and there, and then there's red in the middle, and then as you go around, you see red repeated. You see that blue-green repeated. Um, the pinkish purple is repeated. Orange is repeated. And they're not always repeated right next to one another. You space them out around the whole thing. And that's to keep the viewer's eye moving throughout it so people will stand there and look at it all the way around. And it's for a sense of balance. Notice the dark blue in the middle. I used that kind of on accident. So I had to try at the last minute to find some places to repeat it down in the left-hand corner and whatnot. Um, it's missing something on the right that's dark blue. And because of that, that dark blue really stands out and becomes a, a focal point right there in the middle. Um, even the black in the background is repeated inside the circles. So repetition of shapes and colors is a good thing. So you're going to create your own building, um, looking however you want it. The only thing I ask is that you use geometric shapes for the building and organic shapes for the background. I hope you enjoyed this project, and I can't wait to see what you